Okay, here is an amazing routine by Warner Miller. It uses just the diamonds, ace through king of diamonds, okay? So what you do is you have the spectator. Um, now, it could be helpful to have two spectators for this effect, uh, but you wouldn't have to. Um, if you have just one spectator, they'll need to make note of two different randomly chosen cards, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and assume that we have two spectators, a spectator A and a spectator B here, okay? So you mix those cards, and then you have either one of them, have someone randomly choose a card. Maybe they'll choose this one. This one's set aside, okay? We'll get back to that in a minute. And now from here, what we do is we uh, deal out these uh, mixed cards into four piles of th three cards each, okay? And then you just have spectator A randomly choose any of these four piles as theirs. Maybe they want this one. That's fine. And then spectator B, maybe they want this one. So we have two left to choose from. Maybe spectator A wants that one and spectator B wants this one. Okay, or at least that's the last one that's left, I guess. Okay, and now what they each need to do if you have two spectators, we'll say spectator A is up here. They choose either pile and make note of the bottom card. So this is their special card. So this is the card that spectator A is remembering, the six of diamonds, okay? Now spectator, and then what they do is they set that little pile on top to bury their selection or their special card. Um, here, the same sort of thing is done. Spectator B chooses either pile. Oh, Queen of Diamonds is Spectator B's special card. They set that packet on top of the other, okay? And now we'll go ahead and just set Spectator A's little packet on top of B's. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to perform the Klondike Shuffle twice. And the reason we're doing it twice is we're performing it once for each of the two spectators, spectator A and spectator B, okay? Okay, now once we've done that, this is where we turn to our randomly chosen card over here because it's going to help us, believe it or not. So we have the 10 of diamonds as this randomly chosen card where we're going to use this card in an effort to find spectators A's special card. So I'm just going to spell out T-E-N-10 -E of O-F diamonds, D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. <laughs> Did the 10 of diamonds help us find spectators A's special card? Oh, it did indeed because it was the Six of Diamonds. Okay, now believe it or not, we're now going to use Spectators. This is such an amazing effect. I had to do it a few times and then really give it some thought to figure out how in the world is this working, but it does. Um, so we're gonna use Spectator A's card to find Spectators B's card. Okay, Six of Diamonds, S-I-X, drop the rest on top, O-F, drop the rest on top, D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. Okay, did the Six of Diamonds help us find Spectators A's card? It did indeed, the Queen of Diamonds. This is just a mind-blowing card effect, it really is. And all of these selections, all three of these are truly random. Okay, these are not in any way controlled, okay? So let me just give you a little bit of a glimpse as to what's going on, at least enough of a glimpse so that you can kind of put the mathematics together if you're interested in understanding how this remarkable effect actually works. Okay, well, the first thing I need you to understand that for a packet of 12 cards, any of the 12 diamonds, the following is true. If you spell out any of the 13 card names that are diamonds, right, the top two cards will switch places in that packet of 12, okay? So if you think about it, we pulled one out over here as a special card to help us. So pulling that one out of 13 leaves us with 12. And then we created this pile of 12 in kind of this interesting way with the spectator's cards kind of buried. Well, after you perform the Klondike Shuffle twice, it brings those two cards to the top. 
And in particular, it brings Spectators B's card to the very top and Spectators A's card second to the top. What that means then is after the spelling of our card here, since it switches the top two cards, Spectators A's card is at the very top, which we reveal, but right below it secretly is Spectators B's card, okay? So we have the original card, Ten of Diamonds over here, and now we've discovered Spectators A's card, which was a Six of Diamonds. Now we have just 11 cards left in the pile with Spectators B's card on top of that packet of 11 cards. Well, look at what happens. For a packet of 11 diamonds cards, so cards that have diamonds as their suit, if you have 11 of them and you spell out any card name of any of the diamonds, the top card of that packet of 11 is a fixed point. Spectators B's card is sitting at the top of that packet of 11. So it doesn't matter what we spell for Spectators A's card that we just revealed, it's going to leave Spectators B's card at the top, which is then revealed. This is absolutely mind-blowing. Talk about a whole confluence of coincidences. Absolutely amazing, okay? So this is worth learning. It may seem a little complicated at first, but I think if you go through it once or twice, you'll realize it's not too bad. And boy, does it look impossible to the spectator or spectators, because those three selections are truly random selections. And how they're able to kind of find the others is just beyond belief. And I'll add a link in the description below to some of Warner Miller's works. Uh, he's created hundreds of amazing card effects. So if you want to check out his library of effects, that would be wonderful. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.